Simmers, it's Sim Guru Megs here from the Fire Monkey Studio. We've launched our hot Simmer and Summer update for The Sims Free Play, and we're celebrating the release of our brand new feature, Midtown Cafe. With me here today is our incredible engineer, Amelia. Thanks so much for joining me, Amelia. No problem at all. Midtown Cafe has been in development for over 12 months, and we're excited to show you how your Sims can manage it like a small business and make it their own. The local council has opened a new connection to Simtown and they want a go-getter entrepreneur to bring their business precinct back to life. Hire staff, upgrade equipment and grow your cafe to be the most talked about business in the new map location Midtown, which is what we're seeing right here in front of us. But first of all, we've got to reach player level 27 and build the new terminal located right next door to the children's store in Simtown. So Amelia, you've got this beautiful street view up right now. It looks absolutely stunning. I'd love it if you could actually start showing us what Midtown Cafe is all about and how players can get started. Yeah, absolutely. So from the town map, if you navigate over here, you'll find our Midtown terminal. If I go ahead and build that, you can see here we've got our little bus terminal now and this is your gateway to Midtown. So if we click on this icon, we get our start screen for the Midtown Cafe. And from this screen, you can start your business. So if we go ahead and click that, we're going to meet Barry Ister, our guide through the Midtown Cafe tutorial. And we've uh, put in a bit of work to make sure that this first time user experience is uh, kind of really engaging and looking very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And here we are. This is our first view of the Midtown Cafe. Um, Barry's gonna continue to walk us through stuff, but you can all play that in your own time. So I'm gonna speed through some of this, these things uh, just for the sake of this video. You open this um, main screen, which is where pretty much all of your cafe controls happen. Um, and Barry's gonna walk us through some of that right now. So the progress bar is along here, and that's how we measure XP. Likes are how we display that. You're going to need to get a certain number to unlock each level. So as you can see here, level one is five likes. We're gonna start our first shift, which is exciting. So when we start shift, we can see our staff member shows up in the scene. Now, the thing about impatient customers is that their time is burned down faster, which means that they get angry quicker and angry customers cause your staff stress. So here, Barry is telling us how we can bump that customer to the front of the queue and make sure they get served faster, which is gonna make sure their timer doesn't expire so that they stay nice and happy. This is our stress meter for staff. This is how you can tell how stressed your staff are and whether or not they might need a break soon. Okay, and here we are going to take a look at the tour select screen for the first time. So. You have a choice between easy or challenging, or challenging and I think the other one is difficult, uh, but different levels of tours depending on what you wanna focus on, whether it's getting cafe credits or whether it's getting likes, it's really up to you. There's different themes and within that theme, a different group of tourists, you can see here how many you're going to get. So this challenging tour has five tourists and the theme is green lit. And over here, our other tour is excursioners. There's only four of them. And as Barry is kindly explained to us, uh, we have special tourists inside the tour groups. More difficult tours have a higher chance of having those special tourists. So this icon here is for our money bags and they come with an, a bonus cafe credit amount. And down here is for our influencers. So we're going to accept our challenging tour much like the impatient customer, we wanna make sure that the special tourists are bumped to the front of the queue because if the timer runs out, then we don't get their bonus. So we don't have any influences in this uh, tour group. They're still tourists, but they're not special tourists. Uh, so that's it for the first phase of our tutorial. It is broken up into segments to make it more palatable, less information overload for players. Um, and now we're left to our own devices to run this shift. So I'm going to bump this other money bags tourist so that we can get their bonus as well. And you can see here the burn down on the yellow, which is faster than the burn down on the green. So he's not gonna get angry 
until the green runs out, but we do miss out on his bonus if the yellow runs out. So our first customer is paying. What happens when my staff gets stressed and how do I manage it? The important part from here out is just to manage stress. So if my staff were to get stressed, I could send her on a break or uh, clear out her stress events if I felt inclined. Um, and you can see that when I click on her. So this is Janet. We get a little summary of what she's doing right now. She's doing the espresso prep for the current order. She has no stress events and I have the option there to send her on a break. If she were to get a stress event, she would send herself on break, a little bit of a timeout for her. Um, but right now she's fine, she's managing, it's all good. All the sims that work at your cafe are part of the cafe only. You can do four tours in a shift and two shifts in a day. Each shift is four hours long. And you can see here, we've got our first angry customer. So his ordering was in red. Um, he's not happy with Janet and her performance today. And that's gonna cause her a little bit of stress. And over here, our tour wrapped up. So we have a cool down. It's a 60 minute cool down between each tour. You can see we've got one of four is complete. And if you choose to, you can skip that one with a 12 SP cost, um, but you don't have to. You can just wait it out if you'd like. Amelia, are there any staff types that can work on all equipments and get perks? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's take a look in our main screen again and I'll show you some of the equipment. So uh, we're going to unlock the toaster at the end of the shift. So you can see here we've progressed. We're at level one. We've got our toaster and that has these icons along with it. Um, so we have our piece of equipment that's unlocked. This is an icon for a new worker type and then this piece of toast, which is the base level request item for the toaster. So if we go into the equipment screen, we can see here we've got our coffee machine. We have this single unlock here with some little coffee beans and that's the icon for our espresso. As you progress, you can see a level two coffee machine has this one, which is chai. Uh, level four coffee machine unlocks this, which is latte. And a level six coffee machine will unlock this one, which is chocolate milk hot chocolate <laughs> yeah i was definitely gonna say chocolate yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's chocolate something i think it's a hot chocolate that would make sense from a coffee machine so um as you upgrade you'll unlock different things and you can see here this is kind of the upgrade progression of the coffee machine so we're at level one we've got our espresso level two we unlock the chai and that comes at a higher cost. So customers are going to be paying us more for these higher level requests. And you can scroll along and see further levels as well. Level three, we don't unlock any new requests, but we do get an increased cost to our current requests, which means customers are going to start paying more for those items. So there's a lot of benefit to unlocking new levels on your equipment. What is a specialist staff member and why do I need them? You can see here, Janet, is assigned to the coffee machine and her icon here is for a barista. So Janet's a barista, she's assigned to the coffee machine and that means we're going to see all of the perks as we level Janet up applied because it's important the staff are on machines that they're specialized in. And now if we go to the higher screen, we should also see, oh, it won't happen till the end of the shift uh, when the machine actually unlocks, but um, as you unlock new, equipment types, we're going to see new specialties in here. So you should always make sure you have a specialist assigned to their specialized machines. A barista can work on the toaster. That's fine. If that's all you've got, they will be assigned, but there'll be, uh, it'll be red in here. You'll be able to see that it's a mismatch in specialty and there are, the staff perks won't apply to that piece of equipment. If we go to the manage tab, we can see Janet. She's our only staff member at the moment. And if I click this button here, so we're a level one barista. We don't have any unlocks here, but you can see on level two, we unlock this. Um, and this is negative five seconds to her action time. So she's going to be able to serve customers faster when she's making them espressos. 
If you go to the hire tab, you can hire a temp staff, which is an SP cost, but he comes with a lot of benefits. Um, he can work any station at a max level of perks and he doesn't get stressed. And in addition to that, he's going to be prioritized for the most stressful job, which is directly working with the customer at the register. So taking orders, processing payments. So if I go in here, you can see we have three different manager boost packs, the cafe assistant, cafe manager, and then the mega pack, which has both the assistant and the manager, as well as the director. So I can see it's really important to have staff trained staff working at my cafe. But how do I track my progress for this Midtown Cafe feature? Yeah, so uh, as Barry Easter touched on, in the first part of our Fatui, we have this progress bar. Um, and you can see here, I'm at level one now with my five likes. I get one like per tourist and then additional likes if I serve influencers. I have standard kind of currency unlocks and these icons that represent different requests from our machines. So once I get to level three, customers are going to start requesting the chai latte. And if I haven't leveled up my coffee machine enough to unlock that, I'm going to be missing out on revenue. Level four, they're going to start requesting melted cheese sandwiches. And then we get to level five. You can see this is a timed one. We have three days to get to this to unlock the equipment and the LTP. Equipment we've kind of covered, but I'll recap it again. I'm gonna get the milkshake machine. I'm gonna get a new worker type, which will be the specialist for the milkshake machine. And I'm gonna unlock vanilla milkshakes, which is the base level request. And these are for players to use outside of the cafe lot. You can place them in your normal sim houses or wherever you want. You'll see lots and lots of cool rewards, some nice prizes. We will get to level 20, which is our first hard gate. So uh, we won't see the timer until we have progressed along far enough for this one to be active. This is an upgrade to the appearance of the lot and upgrade to the buildable area that I can build my cafe in. If you don't reach this before the timer expires, you can progress, but there is a, an SP cost to continue from there. Amelia, how many major milestones are there along the way to get to the final visual upgrade with Midtown Cafe? Yeah, so uh, we have seven pieces of equipment that are unlocked and then three stage milestones. And all of that culminates in level 45, which is when the event is considered complete and you've unlocked the final upgrade for the lot. Um, and there's a bunch of other cool prizes. Um, you get this beautiful golden coffee machine, um, some new outfits, some new autonomy, like your Sims can autonomously make coffee, and a bunch of other really cool objects and hairstyles and yeah, stuff like that, including the ability to purchase things within the cafe lot with cafe credits rather than simoleons. So that's something that's really exciting and different, I think, to any other event. So Amelia, I would love to see you do a tour that has all the three different types of tourists. So that's the money bags, the impatience and the influences. Yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at what tours we have available to us now. Uh, and it does look like we have one that has all three. So as you can see, that may not always be the case, but we got lucky. So we've got one money bags, two influences and three impatient customers. And we can serve most of what they want, although my machine is missing the focaccia, but let's go ahead and accept this challenging tour. Um, before I exit this screen though, I do want to call out these little tool tips that we've added for this feature, um, which can really help you understand what you're looking at I know there is a lot of information on these screens and it's presented in a way we haven't presented information before. So if you ever are unsure, these little tooltip icons can help you out. Okay, so we've accepted our tour and they'll start joining the queue. There's our money bags. Let's go ahead and bump him. The bags is heading to the front of the queue. Things are a bit busy. There's a bit of shuffling involved. I think I'm going to bump our influences and we'll just keep an eye on the impatience. Hopefully they don't get too annoyed. 
So the staff that are needed for these orders have already headed behind the counter. Specialists will get the specialist orders ready and you can see all three of them jumped into action there. We've got our barista making coffee. This is the pastry display and he's getting that ready. And then the milkshake machine there as well. All right, so Amelia, this is past level 20, one of the major milestones and uh, this cafe you've styled yourself. You've taken the time to utilize the bread, like the bigger lot size that you get with this upgrade. And you can kind of see that the street's looking really nice and there's some graffiti on the walls in the background. And you've actually made a secondary space there, like a little bit of a library so your customers can read some books while they have some coffee. And some staff members are you know, sweeping the floors and cleaning up and you've customized even like the, uh, the flooring and everything there. Can you walk us through what we're looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you said, this is past the first lot upgrade. Um, so all of this I built myself. It's fully customizable outside of the kitchen area, which we do have locked because we want to make sure that your staff can still get to their equipment and that none of it accidentally gets removed from the scene. But the lot has upgraded too. Um, and if we take a look around, we can see We've got some stuff happening up on this roof, you know, a little bit of life is starting to come into things. There's the beginnings of a rooftop garden, which were not here in the previous lot. As you mentioned, we have this beautiful graffiti. And as you called out, I do have more staff now. So we have unlocked more equipment um, and I have more specialties. Uh, so we've got all of these different requests unlocked, um, different specialties in our staff members. We've got toast specialists and sandwich specialists and a pastry specialist and my staff are all here. Um, you can see Andres is off shift right now but everyone else is kind of working which is cool. There's a lot of customization you can do. Um, I'm gonna roll the dice on my internet connection and press build mode. So I can alter pretty much anything I want in terms of rooms in the buildable area, which, oops, which for me extends out to this wall. Um, so I haven't unlocked the third stage yet and I can't build here until I do. But once I do, I'll have all the way up to this cobblestone to work with for my cafe. So I can put whatever I want in there. The exception to that are kitchen items that are crucial to the shift. So I can't pick up any of these counters, any of this equipment. This sink, I can, if I wanted to get rid of it, I could, uh, because it's not used by the workers and I can move it to certain areas in here that aren't key paths for the workers as well. But a lot of the kitchen area is blocked off and that's to make sure that your staff can get to their equipment and are unblocked from moving around the kitchen area. But it's important to us that you can still make your cafe look however you like. And maybe some of you who are paying particularly close attention will have noticed that the counters look different to what we started with. So if you go into the equipment screen, all of your equipment has this little build mode icon on it. And when I click on this, I'm given a selection of different options. So when you got these items to place in your sim houses. We also unlocked these options. When I select one, it switches out the coffee machine appearance in game. So I can do that with all of our pieces of equipment, of which there are, I think seven. I have two left to unlock. And I can do it with bench tops and the Q markers. So bench tops, this one installed, and these are the cue markers I've selected as well. You can use build mode as you would normally use build mode. You can put a basement in, you can put um, different levels to your cafe, you can place art. You can see I've kind of created this second store because I wanted uh, like an alleyway moment for my cafe. Love um, that, and a rooftop bar. A little rooftop, yep, I've got that over here. So my 
even though this area is not part of the cafe and it doesn't get customers in the same way the cafe is getting customers, customers could choose to come and sit up here. Amelia, I'd love to see this fully upgraded Midtown Cafe. Can we skip to level 45 and see what it looks like when it's fully completed? Take a moment to appreciate how much work our artists put in. They've made this lot look super cool in its final stages. There's something extra to it that it didn't have when we first started our dingy little rundown cafe, but here we are still getting customers. This is post end of event. So once I reach level 45, I can't run tours anymore, but I can still have walking customers. They come in and they order off the menu. You can now buy things in this scene with cafe credits. So if I go into build mode um, and say, look at dining room tables, you'll see all the costs are now super cheap and in cafe credits. And that means I can completely deck out this place for a very low cost. It does come with the disclaimer that you can't remove things from this scene that you've purchased with cafe credits, um, because obviously that would be a major exploit, but uh, you can deck out this scene with it and add things, remove things, whatever, for cafe credit costs instead, which makes it so easy to to put together a really awesome looking cafe. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for walking us through the Midtown Cafe feature, Amelia. It was an absolute pleasure having you on Sims TV with me. We hope players out there love living the dream of owning a small business cafe with your Sims. And for even more details on this new way to play, Amelia's helped me write a, an awesome FAQ and blog notes for the hot Simmer and Summer update. But yeah, thanks for watching everybody and enjoy our latest updates. <laughs>